My demo on making a hand-drawn animated 16mm film has proved to be the most popular of all my demos, and I'm often asked to explain more clearly how I actually worked with cells in the old days. Alas, I was too busy making films then to video how I actually made them, so here's a reconstruction of how I went about making one second of animation from start to finish. Son, son, said his mother ever so many times, graciously waving her tail. We only want one second of that soundtrack. In her tail. That's the bit we're going to recreate. Just in case you missed it, here it is again. In her tail. This is me at home in the 1980s, listening to the soundtrack on my Pixink and recording the words her tail on my bar sheet. So, the crucial number here is 3661. I listen to the sound and it's huh. Her and then the t for tail is on 3671. So I put the t and the word tail lasts to 3685. which is 10, 20, 25 frames per second. So that's the little bit we're now going to animate on cells. Firstly, you need a light box. I always worked with a field guide. This tells you exactly where the middle is and what field or picture size the camera is seeing. The paper for professional animation comes up to 15 field, but I use the cheaper and smaller 12 field size and so needed this little gadget to lower the pegs to keep the artwork in the centre. Meanwhile, back at the bar sheet, we are ready to transfer all the information we recorded onto the exposure sheet, which has all the same horizontal numbers, but now in a vertical position. Remember the magic 3611? Well, there it is at the top right. The exposure sheet not only shows all the timings frame by frame, but has columns into which we can log all our cell levels which begin life as drawings on paper. The same number goes on the corner of the paper sheet and we start drawing. The background here is designed to show off Mother Jaguar and her son, so it's simple and central. Foliage and some water lilies are enough to suggest the turbid Amazon in the South American rainforest where our action happens. So, clip on the next piece of paper, which is for Mrs. Jaguar's body. The body itself will be staying quite still in this particular scene. However, the mouth will be moving and the eyes, so it's very important to draw them clearly where other cells can be added on top with ease. I did quite a lot of research on jaguars and the rainforests when I was making this film on the armadillos, so I visited the library quite a lot. Today, it's so simple. Just surf the internet. And I would advise it because the more you know about your characters and the settings, the more you can decide what is important to you in your particular story. What's very important here is the fact that the body is called M1, and you write that in the second column and on the bottom of your drawing. So now we're ready for the next level, the baby jaguar. To save time, I've sketched him out, and I'm just drawing over the main lines so you can see how he fits into the whole scene. He's on cell J1, level 3. The background is classed as level 5, with level 1 right at the top of the pile. Now I'm drawing the eyes, E6 on level 2. The eyes open at frame 3681. They'll replace a blank cell to prevent flicker when filming. And finally, the all-important tail. When a tail or arm or leg fits onto a body, take particular care to join it up very accurately. Otherwise, it will be seen to wobble about in the finished movie. Mother Jaguar waves her tail graciously. So this called for smooth movement and thus more drawings. Two frames of film given to 12 different tails. Now I see we are ready to start tracing. Years ago I used to use rotaring pens, but now as they're all dried up, I'm using a simple black waterproof marker. With a sheet of transparent punched cell over the background drawing, I start to trace over the lines, clarifying as I go. Don't forget to trace the cell number. Without it, you're lost when it comes to filming. Tracing on cell, short for celluloid, over the drawing of Mother Jaguar, you can see how I add extra detail as I go. 
In the normal studio method, one artist would draw and another would trace and have to stick precisely to the given drawing. However, working on my own, I had more freedom, but maybe a lot more work. Now it's Baby Jaguar's turn. And then, onto the eyes. It's important that the eyes fit precisely in the right position on the face. So I put the light on with the bodies beneath so they show through the drawing of the eyes as I trace. The same goes for the tail, which must fit very accurately onto the body. Great! We've got all the cells traced in our scene, so we're ready for the fun bit, the painting. I used to mix up acrylic paint in lidded pots, so I had plenty of the same colour. However, for this demo, I'm just using acrylics squeezed out onto a palette. You always paint on the back of traced cells, and I started with key details first. In this case, it's black spots. You want cells to dry out quickly, so I'm using a radiator here. Unfortunately, I don't have any photos of the hundreds of cells that dried out all over my house as I worked on movies in the past. Maybe it's just as well. The key colour on the baby jaguar is red for his spots. Whilst I'm in the red, might as well paint other cells that need that colour too. Now the shading. The light on the scene is coming from the right. However, I'm working back to front and in reverse, so on my cell, I paint the left hand side of my subject with light and gradually shade it to dark. So I never used proper animation paint or gloves except when I worked in studios. I found that the method you see here worked fine as long as you make sure that all your outline is filled in with opaque paint. In my research, I found that Jaguar's eyes are a sort of bluey green, so here they are with shaded eyelids, of course. Finally, my favourite bit, the background. As you can really splash about a bit and get really mucky. That's what I miss these days. Drawing into a computer is far too clean. So, there's all the bits that make up the scene. Pile them up in order, following the exposure sheet, and you're ready to start filming. This is how I did it in the past. Today I don't have a rostrum or glass platen to flatten the cell levels and cut out shine, so apologies for reflections, but this is how I'd film the tail. T1, two clicks of the camera. Swap for T2, two clicks. Swap for T3, two clicks. The eyes open at frame 3681, They'll replace a blank cell to prevent flicker when filming. And put on T11 and finally T12. That's it, folks. In her tail. There we are. One second of animation. Remember, the actual cells that I created in the Just So Stories was over 30 years ago. Uh, it was been very interesting to reconstruct how I actually did it. I didn't realise. Uh, what was involved really, but there it is, and if you'd like to have a go yourself, then do. Keep animated and have fun. <laughs>